Okay, guys, here's our next segment on chemical reactions unit. Uh, we're talking about decomposition reactions, or basically, how do you decompose or break things apart? Okay, so if you take a look in our different reaction types, yesterday we talked about putting things together. So we had A plus B yielding AB. So really, decomposition is just the opposite of our combination reactions. So we have AB, or usually a metal and a non-metal, or two different non-metals, and they just split apart into A plus B. Our example here is water. So if you take water and you decompose this, you can take and break it down into its hydrogen and its oxygen. Okay. Uh, we saw yesterday that we actually could run this reaction in the opposite direction, and you could combine hydrogen with oxygen to make water, but you can also go the other direction and split it apart. Now, these are, of these reactions are always the easiest ones to identify because they're the only reaction type that has a lone reactant, meaning it's the only one that has a single thing as a reactant or a single compound as a reactant. Okay, it won't be an individual element, it has to be a compound. Uh, we're going to assume these always happen. Um, and then when it comes to your binary compounds, so for example, what I mean by that is binary compounds are like sodium chloride where it has one, two things to it, being a binary compound. Or calcium nitride being binary. So for our binary compounds, or nitrogen dioxide, they're all just going to split into their two pieces. And again, we have some diatomics, so I need to put the diatomics in here. Okay, and none of these are balanced equations, but you can see where you take a single compound, split it, split it, and split it into their individual pieces, making sure to remember our diatomics in these. So for binary ones, they're pretty straightforward, they're pretty easy. Just take what you have, split the two apart in there. However, decomposition does have three special cases uh, that we want to deal with. There are others, there are more complex ones, because decomposition is a very, very broad type of reaction where basically anything you decompose or break down is considered decomposition. Um, but we want to focus on three special cases for our uh, study in this unit. What we're going to look at is carbonates, chlorates, and hydroxides. So we're looking at three of these polyatomic ions as they break down. Um, we're not going to worry about nitrates or sulfates or phosphates because of how they break down is more complex. Um, but for carbonates and chlorates and hydroxides, they always follow the exact same pattern when they break down. So if you have a metal carbonate, for example, like lithium carbonate, what happens is that metal carbonate breaks into a metal oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Okay. So basically what happens is, is this carbonate, as you start to decompose it, usually it means you need to put heat energy in to do this. Um, this carbonate breaks apart, the oxygen sticks around and attaches to the metal, and then carbon dioxide gas is released from that. If you have a metal chlorate, what happens is instead of making a metal oxide, you make a metal chloride plus oxygen gas. And then if you make here, oh sorry, and then our example for that is magnesium chlorate, you get magnesium chloride plus oxygen. And finally, if you have a hydroxide or a base, as that decomposes, you get a metal oxide from that and water. Okay? If you'll notice, this is exactly opposite of our special case for a combination with metal hydroxides. So a metal hydroxide breaks apart into a metal oxide and then water also with that. So those are our three special cases. Okay? So let's take a look at another example. So if I had aluminum chlorate, it would have to break down. And since it's a chlorate, we're going to make a metal chloride. So I'm going to make aluminum chloride. Again, the 3 is needed because my 3 plus, my 1 minus charge. Plus, because I have a chlorate, I release oxygen gas from that. So it always releases its oxygen gas, this aluminum chloride. If this was a solid, this would be a solid also, because you have an ionic compound that's just breaking apart, so it would stay a solid. 
the gas would just release. Okay? This is not balanced, so we would still have to go through the process of balancing this equation. Because we broke the chlorine apart, we could not keep that together inside our balancing, but we could go through and balance this. So if we look, uh, in this case I have 3 times 3 for my oxygen, which is 9 oxygens. My aluminum is balanced as is. My chlorines are balanced as is. I have 3 chlorines and 3 chlorines. And I have 9 oxygens on this side. So to get 9 oxygens on this side, I'd want to put a 4.5 in there. Well, 4.5 doesn't work. That's not the right way to do it. But it does balance it. It does give me 9 oxygens on this side also. If you want to try that, you can. At the end, when you're done balancing everything, anytime you have a 0.5, you just double everything. So all your blanks out front, you just double it. So this was a 1, we double it to a 2. This was a 1, we double it to a 2. This was a 4.5. So we double it to a 9, and it balances it out, okay? You can do the exact same process for your carbonates, your hydroxides, or any of your binary compounds here. Okay, guys, that's it for decomposition. Uh, please come back tomorrow with this, and we will do some demonstrations, and we'll do some lab stuff, and then practice it. Thank you.